Hello viewers, welcome to Top Notch Online TV. With you today is none other than Teacher Fidelis of Alliance High School. I'm a teacher of English, an author, and an editor. With me today is Teacher Rispa. She's from PCA Kikuyu High School. She's a teacher of English, an editor, an author, and of course, an examiner. Hello viewers, pleasure joining you. Next, we have Teacher Emis of Alliance Girls High School. She's an examiner and a renowned author. Ladies, welcome. Thank so you. today we shall be analyzing the new set books, uh, starting with Fathers of Nations. And the teachers here will be advising what students need to do in order to have those high marks uh, in uh, KCSE, uh, English Paper 2, and also Paper 3. To start off, we shall be looking at the title of the book. Mm -hmm. Kindly, uh, Teacher Rizba, take us through the title of the book. Okay. Looking at the title, Fathers of Nations, we can have first of all the outer meaning. The outer meaning to Fathers of Nations are actually the heads of state that have led the countries into independence. We have presidents that have been mentioned. For example, there's the president of Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa. We even have a monarch who is uh, King Jembe Jembe, for instance. Uh, also, we can look at the title of the book uh, in depth. And from an in-depth analysis, the title of the book is actually satirical. When you talk about a father, what comes to our mind? The duty of a father uh, that should come to our mind, connot uh, the connotation of a father, good leadership. A father is supposed to provide protection, providing the best. But then, looking at the events in the book, how far have the fathers fared on? They've actually done, they've actually uh, performed dismally and a disappointment to the subjects they rule over. You look at the, uh, the actions of these fathers. Instead of protecting, in fact, they're actually, uh, they're actually oppressing the people. For instance, someone like uh, Melusi, he has been oppressed by the ruler in his country. You're looking at good leadership. These people do not provide any good leadership. In fact, they're even clinging to power. You can imagine someone has come into power, Ever since the country got independence, 20 years on, the person is still the one ruling the country. That looks like bad leadership. And are they really providing the best? The fathers have also failed. They're not, they're not providing, in fact, they're providing the worst. The economies have declined. Therefore, we now get to understand the meaning of fathers of the nation. Apart from uh, the, represent, the representation of the people involved, the head of states involved, we need to get the satirical approach of this title. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, uh, Teacher Rispa. Of course, if we're looking at Fathers of Nations, we're looking at these um, uh, presidents, the presidents we have in Africa. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the book is uh, satirical, mm -hmm. then we're just using humor to actually talk about the vices, the issues that are affecting Africans. And uh, the citizens have taken a back seat just uh, looking at everything that is being done without uh, giving any any sort of any sort of uh, solution. solution so to speak so the next thing we look at is the cover and uh, as you look at the cover what can you see because before even we get into a lengthy discussion of everything happening in the book then we need to understand what is in the cover of the book and uh, this will be um, covered by none other than teacher Emis. Kindly take us through. Uh, thank you, Teacher Fidelis. Yes. Hello, viewers, once again. So we are going to look at the cover of this book. Mm -hmm. uh, and from the cover, you can see there is a document that is on the cover. And on the document, it has been stamped approved. Yeah. So uh, another, another, another stamp has the, the word rejected. So clearly, this book deals with two documents. So uh, when you look at this book, it's all about a summit, a summit that was supposed to be attended by head of states. Uh, there are 46 ends of state who are meeting in Bajul, in Gambia, to discuss the way forward for the African states. So in this um, summit, there were two documents that were presented. Uh, we have the way Omega and the path Alpha. So if you look at the cover, 
uh, this uh, document is a representation of the two documents that were presented by the heads of state uh, for deliberation during the summit, the way Omega and the path alpha. So I'll look at uh, what each document entailed mm -hmm. for a like, clear understanding of mm -hmm. what was approved and what was rejected and why, mm -hmm. for what reason was the document approved and for what reason was the other one uh, mm -hmm. rejected. So I'll start with the way Omega. Yes. Way Omega was uh, actually the current document in use. It was supposed to guide uh, the African states and the leaders mm -hmm. on how to carry on uh, um, the development, uh, the economic uh, state of each state. So it was the current document in use. Mm -hmm. So uh, the heads of state were meeting in Gambia to go hold a summit and re-adopt the same document uh, Way Omega. Way Omega was a, a document that advocated for the common growth of the citizens. Mm -hmm. And also uh, it was the one that was put in place by the donors um so it was like um like a, a condition a condition mm -hmm. for us to be able to keep on uh, supporting you giving us giving you aids giving uh you donations mm -hmm. then you have to adopt uh, the document the document yeah. so the ends of state were in support of this document because mm -hmm. who receives the, do the donations the ends, the, ends, yeah. the ends of state. Mm -hmm. So they were in the support of these documents because they wanted mm -hmm. the donations to keep on coming to them, mm -hmm. the aids to skid coca keep on coming to them. Mm -hmm. But now, going back to what Chicharispa has talked about, mm -hmm. satire, mm -hmm. why were they going all the way to Bajol in Gambia, Gambia. Yeah. to readopt the document that was still in use? Mm -hmm. You see, that's just uh, something to do with uh, with wasting of public resources. Yes. Because they were going to say, I have been using this document, mm -hmm. let us continue using it. Mm -hmm. There was no need for them to travel all the way mm -hmm. uh, to go to Gambia for, to the, Gambia. Summit. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. for the summit. Mm -hmm. So why hold the summit in the first place mm -hmm. if we're just going to keep the document mm -hmm. that they were uh, using? Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the only document that was in the agenda mm -hmm. for the summit. Mm -hmm. And that was the only document that was supposed to be discussed and uh, of course yeah. re-adopted. Yes. It's like a, it was like a formality. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, um, before the summit began, there is this other group, AGDA, yes. uh, Agency for Governance mm -hmm. Development in Africa, Africa led by Tad Longley. Yeah. So this group realized that the African states are not moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. There is a, re a leadership crisis in Africa mm -hmm. and they wanted to get things done in the right way. Mm -hmm. So they came up with that second document. Mm -hmm. That's why we have two documents on mm -hmm. our cover. Mm -hmm. They came up with that second document called Path Alpha. Alpha. Now this document was in favor of the yeah. citizens. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to counter way Omega. Mm -hmm. So since it was not in the agenda, they uh, make use of the person who was appointed to be uh, mm -hmm. the advisor of yeah. the ends of state during the summit yes. to sneak in way on the, a part of Alpha the, sorry, yeah, into the agenda. Yes. So um, when the summit began halfway, mm -hmm. uh, Path Alpha was introduced into the agenda mm -hmm. and obviously they had to to like uh, review the two documents mm -hmm. and discuss the two documents and come up with ways to find out which document they are going to adopt and which one they are going to reject. reject. Yeah. So that's why we have two documents. One mm -hmm. approved and another one uh, rejected. rejected. Yes. So uh, Path Alpha was supposed to solve the problems that the African leaders could not solve. Mm -hmm. Things like um, military coups, mm -hmm. things like a rigging of elections, mm -hmm. because these African leaders were known to rig elections eh? yeah. and uh, to organize military coups. Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to solve those problems that were mega mm -hmm. or the African leaders could not solve. Mm -hmm. So um, during the summit, they came up with a method. Um, later on, we are going to look at that when looking at yeah. the synopsis. Mm -hmm. But they came up with a method uh, that uh, enabled them to pick one of the documents yeah. and uh, ironically the document that was picked was the one that was not in the agenda. Yeah. So what we have here as, as the approved document on the cover, mm -hmm. it's the path alpha, yes, which was not in the agenda initially. Yeah. That is what was approved and mm -hmm. what was rejected was the way Omega document mm -hmm. that was meant to uh, like uh, cater for the selfish interests 
of, of the leaders. African leaders. leaders. Yeah. So basically the cover is just about those two documents, mm -hmm. the one that was adopted and the one that was rejected. Wow, that was so well done. I'm very mm. sure our students at home can now follow with uh, the discussion that you're having. Because for a start, if you're just looking at the two documents, this is uh, Way Omega and yeah. Path Alpha. Alpha. Yeah. So uh, the summit, when we discuss the summit, then we see these are the two documents that were supposed to be discussed. And now, uh, without further ado, I want you to look at the setting, the setting of Fathers of Nations. What can you say about the setting, Teacher Respa? Okay, about setting maybe, first of all, is to tell our students that whenever you are looking at setting, consider two parameters. Consider the setting in terms of place. Mm -hmm. Where is this story alluding to in terms of place? Also consider the setting in terms of time. Uh, during what time, could, during what era could yeah. this story have been taken from? Mm -hmm. uh, in answer to that, I'll start with the setting according to time. Looking at the events that are taking place, I can say this was uh, during the end of the 20th century and also at the beginning, towards the beginning of the 21st century. Yeah. Looking at some of the things that are being alluded to. For instance, we are looking at uh, a certain country, Libya, trying to create weapons of uh, nuclear weapons. Yeah. At the same time, we are looking at a president in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. who had just come to power and he was in fact clinging, clinging to power. Yeah. Therefore, we are not wrong to be talking about the story alludes to years such as maybe the 80s yeah. towards also the early 2000s. That is it according to setting in terms of time. Yeah. Looking at the setting in terms of place, we can comfortably conclude that this is Africa. Yeah. We are looking at some of the suggestions, yeah. some of the examples have been given. Mm -hmm. We are looking at a summit taking place in Gambia. Mm -hmm. They are talking about AU, African Union leadership. Yes. And there, there's also the mention of the various characters mm -hmm. and each one of them has been picked from uh, one among the African countries. Mm -hmm. Tahi from Libya, yeah. Melusi maybe from Zimbabwe, yeah. uh, Professor Karanja from Kenya, from Kenya. Yeah. even uh, Longwe. He's actually from South, South Africa. Africa. Comfortably, we can conclude the setting in terms of place is actually Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Now, looking at fathers of nations, definitely we're looking at everything that is happening in Africa as a continent. Mm -hmm. Teacher Rispa has mentioned that the main characters that we have in the book, most of the characters come from the African countries. Mm -hmm. And in a way, we're looking at these uh, characters coming up and giving a representation mm -hmm. of the issues happening in their specific uh, countries. countries of origin. Mm -hmm. Now, the citizens uh, have adopted a certain way of life. It's a status quo. When we see the summit happening in uh, Gambia, what happens to the citizens? We have the bulldozers mm -hmm. just destroying the, the slums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the water is mm -hmm. directed to the hotel whereby we shall be having the summit. So as Africans, mm -hmm. what are we doing about uh, the issues facing us? The next mm -hmm. thing we shall be looking at is the synopsis of the book, because for you to be in a position to have those high marks in the excerpt, for instance, mm -hmm. you have to know what happens in the book. Uh, if you're given a certain page from the book and you're asked what happens before this excerpt, what happens after this excerpt, what do we look at? We're looking at the summary of the text. So teacher Emis will be assisting us to look at the uh, synopsis in Fathers of Nations. Kindly take us through. Okay. Uh, thank you once again. So uh, I'm just going to look at the general um, general idea of uh, that is brought out in this book by Paul Gita. Yes. So first of all, just like uh, uh, my, my, my colleague has said, mm -hmm. this book is a political satire. Uh, the book is meant to use humor to expose the weaknesses of the leaders in our African countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that they do that only favor their self-interest and not the interests of the common uh, citizen. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we keep on saying that the book is uh, a political satire. Mm -hmm. So most of the things that the leaders in this book do is not for the interest of their citizens, it's not for the interest of the development of the countries, but uh, to favor uh, their selfish uh, gains. So uh, this book, in a humorous way, uh, the writer exposes the ignorance of most of the 
uh, leaders and how incompetent the leaders are. For example, if you look at uh, President uh, Banyora, mm -hmm. uh, we are told that he was a uh, senile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's someone who can't even make a uh, judgment. And yet he has been placed there as the president uh, of his country and in charge of the uh, committee that was supposed to adopt the method of choosing the best uh, document to use for the African states. Uh, other other um, leaders of states, for example, someone like uh, the uh, Debo, President mm -hmm. Debo, Debo, at the load for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So some of them have stayed in power to the extent mm -hmm. of feeling like if they belong. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so like their country power. is their bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like they belong. Yeah. So um, they don't actually uh, focus so much on the de development of the country because they have relaxed. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, they are also uh, campaigning for We Omega because, yeah. we, because we, we Omega was supposed to make sure that they stay in power for as long as as they could. So um, the book is supposed to bring out how clueless these African leaders are. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what ails their countries. They have no idea how poor uh, the citizens in their countries are. Sure. They have no idea the, the suffering the citizens in their own countries mm -hmm. are uh, undergoing. You look at uh, Gambia, for instance, Bajo, where the summit was being held. Mm -hmm. um, just to try and please the, the, the guests, mm -hmm. what does the host president do? Just like our teacher Fidelis has mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, the host president makes sure that they destroy all the slums yeah. and the kiosks mm -hmm. that were on the, mm -hmm. uh, the roadside yeah. so that they can create that picture that Baju is a very clean city, yes. that picture that Gabia mm -hmm. is a very organized country, country. but mm -hmm. who suffers? The, the, the common. The yes, the common. Yeah, yeah, because if you look at the book, we are told that mm -hmm. it was source of livelihood for many families. Yes. Yet they came at night with bulldozers, mm -hmm. uh, got rid of everything, mm -hmm. all the kiosks, the slums. Mm -hmm. So the citizens were left with no source of livelihood, mm -hmm. with no house mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So they were like homeless and the government didn't care. What happens to the basic needs like water? They, they, had died, very dry yes, they, yeah. they elected to the monument mm -hmm. that was supposed to like uh, masculinize the, the, the mm -hmm. leaders. Yeah. So the citizens were left with no water mm -hmm. so that the guests can go like wow this is beautiful yeah, such a beautiful town country. is very neat yes. for the sake of the as in the high so that mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. have that um uh, that kind of um how do you put it it's just a mask yeah it's, they're just mm -hmm. masking mm -hmm. everything that is happening in gambia yes yeah uh again this book exposes our uh the neocolonialism in our countries mm -hmm. how the leaders are uh, battering colonial problems, yeah. post-colonial problems, for mm -hmm. example, poverty mm -hmm. and corruption. But what are they doing about it? Nothing. Are they doing anything about it? So, yes, the same point I was talking about, mm -hmm. that people who are left to suffer mm -hmm. are the citizens. Mm -hmm. So the priorities of uh, our leaders are misplaced. Mm -hmm. And the things maybe, that, yeah. Sorry, sorry to cut you short. Mm -hmm. And also maybe about the neocolonialism uh, issue. Yeah. We are seeing that these people, they're still dancing to the tune of the colonial master. The colonial mm -hmm. master, for instance, says, you have to adopt we Omega, omega yeah. otherwise we take we, we take away the aid. Yeah. And what are they doing? They're even meeting to confirm the same document. Yeah. Therefore, we are, we are able to confirm your colonialism is still in existence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, um, there's a, a place where Long Way says mm -hmm. that uh, what ails our African states mm -hmm. is corruption and impunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and those who are corrupt mm -hmm. are not punished. Mm -hmm. That's They're where not. the identity comes in. Mm -hmm. Because who is corrupt? It's the same people. The, the leaders. The leaders, yeah. the leaders yeah. are the people who are corrupt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there is no way we are going to get rid of those two diseases, corruption mm -hmm. and impunity, yeah. unless we change the entire system of leadership. Mm -hmm. So, clearly, there is crisis in leadership in the mm -hmm. African states. Yeah. And why, that's why uh, Paul Bitter uses this book to expose yeah. uh, such problems and challenges in the leadership, 
and such problems and challenges in how the African states are governed and try to come up with a solution by use of his book. Uh, so actually the story revolves around the two, uh, the summit that I talked about when yeah. I was talking about uh, the page cover. Mm -hmm. uh, it revolves around the summit from the beginning up to the end. The story is about the summit that was uh, uh, held for the ends of state in Africa to mm -hmm. discuss the best uh, approach to take yeah. in the leadership of the African states. Mm -hmm. So um, there are two documents presented. I feel like uh, I'm repeating myself, but yeah, I just yeah, say yeah. that. Yeah. There are two just documents presented, mm -hmm. uh, Path Alpha mm -hmm. and we Omega. Yeah. And throughout, other than the flashback that you get in the story, mm -hmm. uh, so that you get to understand our characters better, mm -hmm. throughout you're just talking about uh, Path Alpha and, and we Omega, Omega yeah. and what each document has and how each document is going to help the members of yeah. the African states mm -hmm. as well as the leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, initial, uh, <coughs> at the end of it all, the book ends whereby, though in a satirical way, mm -hmm. uh, the best document is picked. But, yeah. And uh, when you go to the forward, so to take you back, mm -hmm. when you go to the forward, the critic mm -hmm. that uh, is talking in that uh, book, mm -hmm. um, that is in the Roman pages. Eh? Yeah. The critic mm -hmm. is asking the person that he is intervening why the uh, heads of state keep on saying that the summit was a failure, yeah. yet the citizens are saying that the summit was a success. Was a success. The heads uh, of state are saying the summit was a failure because the document that they wanted approved was that rejected. was in their favor was yes. rejected. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the citizens are saying that the summit was a success mm -hmm. because the document that uh, factors in mm -hmm. their interest was mm -hmm. what was adopted. adopted. Yes. So at the end of it all, mm -hmm. we see uh, a successful mission mm -hmm. or a win situation yeah. whereby the citizens' uh, issues yeah. are addressed yeah. through uh, alpha. 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 Uh, so just like uh, my colleague has said, just to conclude that, mm -hmm. uh, this book uh, revolves around uh, five main characters. Mm -hmm. Four are the major ones, mm -hmm. which are, are symbolic mm -hmm. for the African states because yeah. each has been picked mm -hmm. from, from an African, African country, country. Yeah. and they bring uh, the issues that are affecting that African mm -hmm. country. And the mm -hmm. fifth one yeah. is the one now who is in charge of these four, yes. but he's also an African piece because he's also yeah. an Nigerian. Yeah, Nigerian. So, um, the book revolves around those four characters, mm -hmm. and it's through the analysis of each and every character we get mm -hmm. an in depth. Uh, understanding of the mm -hmm. story. Yeah, thank you so much, teacher Emis. And with that, students at home, at least we have looked at the four main uh, things that you need in Fathers of Nations, starting with the title, looking at the cover. I hope when you look at this book, now you understand why we have uh, the approved document and why we have the declined document. So question for you, uh, students, which document was approved? So next time we shall be looking at the characters and of course when we discuss the characters we get to understand actually what the book is about. Why were these characters picked? Why were they joining? What was the main reason as to why they uh, joined the summit? What did they want to uh, talk about in the summit? So until next time, it's a goodbye for us. Bye-bye.